Hey, welcome back again to the Ivory Tower Collections. Uh, this will be a brief part two. In this uh, section, I'm gonna just kind of show you uh, the different connecting components I needed to get for cables and uh, just kind of show you some unique things in regards to whenever you have something like one of these Xtron AV video selector boxes. So one of the issues that uh, I discussed briefly in the part one was that it uses all BNC type connectors. And most consumer grade electronics uh, do not possess or use those kinds of connections for, uh, for audio video connectivity. In fact, BNC stuff, as I had mentioned, is mainly for professional grade stuff. It's interesting though, because not only is BNC of course used for uh, high end audio video connectivity, but it's also used, as I had mentioned, in some older earlier network connectivity and also uh, oscilloscopes and test equipment for electronics still largely uses BNC connectivity uh, for the probes and, and things of that sort for connecting up your signal generators, what have you. First thing I wanna talk about is the S video on this. So on the input selections on the back, and I don't really have an easy way to show this because the box is so huge, but the selections on the back, again, there's five input ports or five connecting points on each input. And depending on where you connect things to those connecting points will determine what kind of video signal you're inputting into the unit. So in the case of S video, there are really just two signal lines needed for S video. You have what you call your luminosity or luma for short, and you have your chrominance or chroma for short. Using a breakout cable such as this one here, which goes from the four pin DIN connection to two RCAs that split out the chroma and luminance, which by the way, this is usually the chroma and this is usually the luminance on the white cabling. It's usually how it's done. Uh, I can connect them up to this. But I had another problem here. You see, most of my cabling and most of my consoles, which feature S video modifications on them, actually do require a male S video connection, just like you see here. We've got the pins inside the connector. And that wouldn't be a problem. You think, okay, well, you just plug this in and you plug this onto the other side. And I, I could do that, but it would mean that I would need some RCA couplers and uh, just a lot more thicker wire in the mix to connect everything up. So instead I came up with a slightly, eh, not quite as elegant, but at least a cheaper solution for sure. I got these little cables here, this little S-Video to RCA breakout cables from Console 5 for really cheap. But again, it has a male connection on the end and I really needed it to be female. So my solution, but this is an S-Video coupler. Specifically, it's a female to female coupler, or in simpler terms, it's an S-Video gender changer. So using this cable in conjunction with the coupler, I end up with the same thing that I had before, only now I have the required female connection point. Now, why do I need the female connection point if the console itself also has a female connection point? Well, that's an excellent question, obviously. And the simplest answer to that, I already have high quality S video cables coming off directly from my consoles. And of course the end of those S video cables is, so I'm sure you can guess, it's a male connection point. See, this is the end of one of the cables coming off of the console. So by using this converted cable setup I've got with the ginger changer, I can just simply take my cable here and just plug it all into one. So this is from the console side and this goes back into the Xtron's S-Video YC inputs. Composite video is very simple. With composite video, I only need just one of the B and C to RCA adapters and then the standard composite yellow jack uh, just plugs right onto the end of this. And it'll... So that takes me to the next one, which is how am I going to set up RGB and my other sources? Well. Again, RGB, the analog type of RGB is really largely VGA. And so I do have a VGA to BNC breakout cable. And uh, this also was actually not very expensive. I think this was around $6 on mono price. So basically, as long as I've got a VGA output connection that I can provide from the console side, then I can plug in all the various uh, 
require uh, required signal lines which in the case of VGA you got your got your red and you got your I gotta break these out a little bit they're all tangled up we got our blue we got our green and then the uh, two remaining cables which are black and, and white or sometimes black and gray as the case of this cable these are my horizontal and vertical sync signal lines so these, all of these would actually plug into one input source on the back of the Extron selector box. And then I would could just use a standard VGA cable to go from this to the console. So then that just leaves me with audio. Now the audio on these things is a bit unique. It doesn't use standard RCA inputs. Now I take that back. I do have standard RCA inputs here for the front input, uh, which is input seven on this box. But this is the only part where I can use standard RCA jacks for an audio input. Instead, Xtrons use these crazy little connectors called Phoenix connections, Phoenix connectors. Basically what it is, and I know this isn't gonna come up real well in the light, and I'm trying to get my camera to focus. All right, we can try, there we go. So the Phoenix connector is basically a solderless terminal type connection. So what happens is, is you, you just take your your bare strand wires from your audio input sources or output, because this is also used for the audio out, um, and you basically plug them into where they're required on these little slots, which are holes back here, and then you use the screw terminals up here to screw down onto the wire, connect it and lock it into place. And then you'll see that we've got these little input connections here, and that actually plugs into the back of the Xtron. So I have to take one of these, and then I'm combining it with something like this. I actually got these locally for really cheap, like 50 cents a pop, and it's exactly what it looks like. It's a left-right audio RCA designed for panel mounting. So it's actually designed to be mounted on a PCB upright like this. But I took this, or one of these, add some wires to it and some shrink wrap, and I end up with something like this where I've got my left and right audio input lines broken out. They use a common shared ground connection here. So you take all that and I added a little bit of shrink tubing on the back just to try to minimize some grounding and shorting issues that could still occur. Cause I do have some bare metal back here and I don't have a real easy way to uh, cover that up. That's the only disadvantage with a thing like this. Take that and eventually I end up with something like this. So you can see here that I've got the Phoenix connector with the wires I need for the RCAs secured down inside of it. And then this just plugs into the Xtron and provides me with standard RCA input jacks or output jacks to use with consoles. So yeah, that's what we're, that's what all's involved. So right now I'm still finalizing. I've got a few more of these uh, audio jacks to do. I've done about three or four so far. Um, this one's ready to be done. Just got to trim it up, get the wire leads done. And, and uh, I have to add a few more jumper wires to each connector too, but that's no big deal. And um, we'll just about be ready. Then I'll test all the input ports, make sure everything's good, make sure the consoles are set up and I have them selected on the right uh, video input type through the Xtron and uh, just make sure everything looks good to go. And then from there, part three will be dissecting the video game cabinet <laughs> console collection cabinet and uh, figuring out how I'm gonna get this bad boy put in place and get everything wired into it. So yeah, thanks for hanging out again and uh, see you in the next part.